Thanks for joining me here today on my follow-up video regarding the products that I purchased in my last haul video that I did. It was just like a small haul, not that major, but there are a couple of follow-up issues that I do wanna talk about, mainly one. So I did a quick little haul from Safe and Chic as well as Sephora. I will link that up here somewhere for you to go and check out if you wanna see my initial thoughts of what I purchased. But like I said, this is gonna be a follow-up. And the main reason why I wanted to do this was because of the PYT uh, eyeshadow, and I think it was like a highlighter and a powder um, palette that I purchased from Safe and Chic. So I don't have it anymore because I did return it. Uh, so I don't, I can't show it to you here, but like I said, you could refer to the previous video. I will post a picture up here so that you can see it. Um, but the story behind that palette and me wanting to buy that palette was I had seen it all over Instagram, or maybe not all over, but on several feeds of people that I follow, green beauty people that I follow. And it looked really pretty, very well priced. And then Reagan from Indie Boo talked about it in one of her videos. And I thought, okay, she, she loves it. I keep seeing it all around. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this thing. So I had a code from Safe and Chic. I decided to jump in and purchase that palette. So I, I liked it. I did, it wasn't like mind blowing, but I, I liked it. It was a very nice basic neutral palette that worked really well for my skin tone. But when I posted it on Instagram, I got a comment from my friend Diana and she asked me where it was made. And I thought, oh, there must be some kind of an issue here with it being made in China. So I went and I looked it up and yes, it is made in China. So, and I think that probably all their products are made in China. That's why the price is pretty low. Um, but I noticed that on their, uh, their website description, it said non-asbestos talc which I know is a big concern for talc that's coming from China. But there's also other contaminants aside from just asbestos that can get into talc, as well as just questions about the quality of products coming out of China. So why I'm mentioning this and why I felt like it was important to jump on is to make sure that you do your own research because I was sort of going off on other people's um, Instagrams and uh, Reagan's video and she actually did her own video on her re rethinking PYT and some other brands. She did a recent video about that where she said too that she kind of thought that, you know, because it was around in the green beauty space that it was gonna be clean or, um, you know, meet her standards for ingredients, but that it ultimately didn't. And then I got caught in the same trap of just thinking like, oh yeah, she liked it, other people like it, you know, it must be good. And I didn't even think about reading the ingredient list. So this is just a caveat to read ingredient lists to make sure that is, uh, the quality is up to your standards. If you're fine with things coming from China, that's great. If you, you, you know you're not too concerned about synthetics or whatever that's great too but for me I decided to go ahead and return it because how it being made in China was a definite ding against the product and then I will list below here all of the synthetic ingredients and I'm not opposed to synthetic ingredients I still play around with conventional makeup which I've mentioned many times in the past but this had so many in there the ingredient list almost reads like a conventional product in my mind so you can decide what you think about those ingredients that I just listed but for me I just don't want to take the time to look all of those ingredients up, do the research, see if they're clean or not clean, because frankly, I didn't love the palette that much to expend that much energy. And when I reached out to Safe and, Safe and Chic and they said, yes, you can go ahead and return it and get store credit, I was totally fine with that. So what I did is I already got my store credit back from them and I have purchased some Alima, a couple of blushes and a bronzer instead. So I'm really excited to try the Alima products that I purchased. I've been really wanting to try that. I think I got the Mauna Loa bronzer and I've been wanting to try that for years now, years and years. So I'm excited to get that. So it all ended up working out in the end, but I guess my main point of this part of the video is to do your own research. And even if I mention something that I like it and it works for me, the ingredient list might not match up to what your standards are. So I just wanted to use this as an example and I'm definitely not blaming Reagan at all she kind of did the same thing I did in terms of just assuming that it was going to be a product that she wanted to have in her life and then I did the same thing too and it just kind of obviously became sort of like a snowball thing so I'll stop talking about it just make sure you do your own research for sure 
All right, so moving on to a product that I really did love and I can definitely see myself repurchase, repurchasing again is the Graydon Face Food Mineral Mist Toner. Now this has such a beautiful fine mist. Oh, and it's $38. The mist on here is wonderful. It's just like my ideal face mist um, because it's so thin and so fine and you can definitely apply it over makeup and it's not gonna disrupt your makeup. Um, this does not have any humectants in it though. There's no glycerin or aloe or honey or anything like that in here. It simply has um, magnesium chloride, it has ionic copper, has ionic silver and ionic zinc. And the copper helps um, increase your collagen production. Ionic silver can help kill bacteria and ionic zinc can help decrease inflammation. So that's why it's called this mineral, uh, mineral mist toner because it just has water and then it's loaded with these minerals. I actually really do like using this even under makeup. So what I'll do is use a couple of layers of this and then maybe a layer to uh, a toner that does, or like more of an essence toner that does have more humectants in it. Um, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, I think maybe in my recent Get Ready With Me, that I am doing more layers of toners and essences because I've just noticed that my skin has been feeling more dry. I'm not too sure why that is. I feel like I'm drinking enough water uh, to combat that type of dehydration. But anyway, I have needed to do more of those layers like with the seven skin method that I've talked about before. Um, I'm not quite doing seven, but I'm not only doing three anymore. I'm more, I'm ramping it up a little bit more into the four and five area to really get in that good, good hydration. So I really like this. Um, I would definitely get this again. No, no question about it. Uh, and it is uh, scentless. It's fragrance free. There's absolutely no scent to this. So if you like um, skincare products that aren't scented, this would be a good one to check out. And then the last thing I got in that Safe and Chic haul is the Fit Glow Beauty Serum, or Lip Serum, I should say. And this is in Nudie, and I am really loving this. I have been reaching this, reaching for this uh, a lot since I purchased it, and that's what the Doe Foot Wand looks like. I'm just gonna swatch it right there on my hand so you can see the color. It's a really pretty pink, maybe there's a little bit of brown in there. I feel like it's neutral to cool and that tends to be a color that works really well on me. And maybe at the end of this video, I'll remove the lipstick that I have and put this on instead. Uh, but yeah, I really love the lip serums, $42 if I didn't mention that already, so very expensive. I don't really know if it warrants the price. So if you can get it on sale, like especially for 20% off, which I think is what I had when I purchased this, you know, then it gets more into the $30 range, which I think is definitely more appropriate, still expensive, but more appropriate for what this is. So I don't know if I would pay the full out $42 unless that sort of like tipped me over onto some amazing gift with purchase that I was wanting to, to get or, you know, free shipping or something like that. I might pay the full price, but probably not. <laughs> All right. So then the two things that I talked about in that previous video were just a couple of things from Sephora. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Ren Ever Calm Overnight Recovery Balm. And this is a nice size for travel. This is 30 mils, one ounce. So if you've been having difficulty wanting to travel with balms that you like, which tend to be a little bit bigger and bulkier, this is kind of a nice size for that. This is $48, like I said, it's 30 mils, one ounce. And this has such a unique texture. And I'm not gonna go over every single ingredient in here because while it definitely leans natural and leans clean, some of those natural ingredients are um, a little bit more highly processed than what I usually talk about when it comes to a balm. But like I said, this texture, first of all, you, when you touch it, it just kind of bounces right off of it. It's very firm feeling. So you really have to dig your finger in and you'll see here, oops, just dropped a little chunk. You'll see here that the finish is very satiny. I mean, it feels like a balm, but the texture is really uh, unique. And um, like I said, just absorbs really, really quickly. So I almost feel like you could use this during the day under makeup. I haven't tried that yet, but I definitely will now that I just thought of that in my head. I'm gonna take this little scoop here that fell. 
this little blob and put it on my other hand because it's making my skin feel so moisturized and good. So I really do recommend this if you're looking for um, a balm that maybe has a little bit more of a unique texture, kind of like a bounce and um, waxiness almost, but that absorbs in really quickly and isn't too thick. So I don't know if I'm describing the texture very well, but I highly recommend going to Sephora, maybe getting a sample of this or just testing it out in store and see if it's something that sounds interesting to you. But I really do like it. I think that I saw TT, is it TT Sandra was talking about it. Alana has talked about it. Those are two conventional YouTubers that I do like to watch. So they were touting it's singing its praises so i decided to check it out and i i agree too i'm going to sing its praises as well i really really like it now we're going to move on to the last product and this is from cora organics and this is the noni glow face balm and as you can see it's in a stick which i really like this has been so easy to use um, and just to let you know, it is $38 for just over a third of an ounce. And the reason why I like that it's in a stick is A, it's gonna be fantastic for travel, and also it's super easy to apply. So you don't have to dip your fingers into any kind of a pot, you just tap it on, and it's really, really soft, so you barely have to press it all. And I just lightly just tap it all over my skin and then massage it in. And I have been loving this at nighttime. I'm using this over everything. So with my regular skincare regimen in the evening, you know, um, washing my face, doing the whole toner thing, maybe adding in a serum and an oil, and then I will put this on top and I feel like it just, it locks in everything so well without being too thick or too heavy. I will give you the heads up though that it does have coconut oil and beeswax and shea. So if any of those are issues for you, you wanna steer clear of this. If those ingredients tend to work for your skin, I highly recommend this. There's also sunflower oil, rosehip oil, of course the noni oil, and there is a little bit of rose in here, but the rose is not like super powdery, super strong. It's kind of more of like this fresh kind of grassy rose. I think I mentioned that it smelled like grass when I first opened it in that haul video. But now that I've had it on my skin almost every night since then, I definitely get more of the rosiness of this product. But like I said, it's in a very fresh kind of garden grassy way. So this has just become a huge favorite. Like I said, I've used it almost every night since I got it and I really love the effects. I love the smell. I love how it feels. It's just, it's become part of my nightly ritual that I really enjoy. Like I said, this is gonna be great for travel. You could throw this in your bag, uh, your travel bag, your gym bag, whatever. And I still, of course, really love the Yasuni balm from Earthwise Beauty. There's two balms from Live Botanical that I really love. Um, and I still do use those depending upon what I feel like my skin needs. But right now, this has been such an easy one to reach for. So that's it on my follow-up of that haul video. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lipstick that I have on right now and put on the Fit Glow. And this is the Rodan lipstick in mod something. I don't know if it's like new mod or mod, I can't remember, but it's definitely got the name mod in it. All right, so I'm just gonna remove this as best as I can. So let's go ahead and put some of this on and it applies so smoothly and feels really, really good on the lips. So I do not have a mirror here. <laughs> I did not plan for this but you don't really need a mirror to apply this. So this would be really easy to use on the go. I tend to keep it at home because I don't want it to get all dinged up in my handbag. But yeah, I really love this color. Hopefully you can get a sense of the color. Like I said, I didn't bring a mirror with me, so I'm not exactly sure how I applied it or if I applied enough for you to see the color. But uh, this will give you a general idea of what the color looks like. So that wraps it up on my follow-up of my most recent haul video. I hope this is helpful in some way to you. If you have any issues or something that I didn't address around the whole PYT thing, definitely feel free to ask me that. I, of course, I did let um, Safe and Chic know the ingredients that were a problem for me, and they were very thankful for the feedback. So I don't know if, if more people kind of complain to them or let them know that they have issues with it being made in China and some of those ingredients, uh, that would probably be a good thing uh, just so that they can know what their customer base wants and doesn't want. But that really great customer service that I was provided from Safe and Chic for sure. And this is, I am not affiliated with them in any way. I just wanted to let you know that. 
So thank you guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.